Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. If you are new, welcome. I typically do makeup and panning related content, but today we're going to be talking about the books that I have read so far this year. I am an avid reader, or at least I used to be. I used to consume a ridiculous number of books and then I had kids. I finally got back to a place where I can read more frequently and I am just embracing it with gusto. So we're going to talk about the books that I've read since the start of the year. I've read seven books thus far and they have all been romance novels. That has just been where I have been wanting to spend my time recently. Something light, fun, steamy, spicy. That is how I want to spend my time. All right, so let's talk about the first book that I have finished so far this year, and that is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Howley. I rated this three stars out of five because it was difficult to really kind of get into the story. It was hard for me to kind of get into it. So in this story, we have Muriel. She is a witch. The world that Sarah Howley has created is a world exactly like the one that we live in in real life, except it also has a plethora of magical beings just living alongside of us regular folks, and that's the world. And I think it's really a cool idea where, you know what, your next door neighbor could be a troll, and that's fine and normal. So I love that. So Muriel, she is a witch, and she's not very good at it. She comes from this family of really well-respected and powerful witches and she has been sort of brought up with this idea and this prophecy that she's going to be incredibly badass and awesome and honestly she she sucks at it with the exception of working with plants. She's really good at that. Her family thinks that that is silly, that basically it's just gardening, but that's where she really excels and shines and that is just not good enough for her family. So she is working on sort of improving her witchery skills and she accidentally summons a demon to um, take her soul. And that is Ozroth and he is just nicknamed Oz as the book goes on. And he's, you know, this is a grumpy to sunshine uh, sort of story and, you know, Muriel, she's very light, effervescent and quirky and fun and Oz is just pissy all the time. He has the moniker of Osroth the Ruthless and there's never been a soul that he hasn't been able to bargain for and once she has accidentally thrown this out into the universe he can't just be like oh it was an accident cool gotta go. They actually have to go through this bargaining before he can leave and they slowly sort of you know fall in love obviously it's a romance novel where it was difficult for me is this is told entirely from Mariel's perspective so you have no idea why you're supposed to like Oz other than the fact that you know she's got some sort of you know excitement for him you don't really understand why because he's just mean and unpleasant towards her and because you don't get a lot from his perspective it just makes it really hard for you to want to root for them to get together and it just it's a slow build and not in the fun way. Now by the time you get to the end I did enjoy where everything sort of ended up. It just it was difficult for me to get there which is why I only gave it three stars out of five. Was it terrible? No. Am I reading a terrible book right now? Yes. This was fine. It just like I said, it took some time to kind of get into being enjoying the book. I know that doesn't sell it all that well, but it wasn't bad, just not my favorite. The next book that I read is a Tessa Bailey. I do enjoy Tessa Bailey books. This is It Happened One Summer, and I did rate this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this. So in this one, we've got Piper Bellinger, who is the stepdaughter of a huge movie producer. She has always had lots of everything right at her fingertips and she leads what her family amounts to a pretty vapid Instagram life. She's not feeling really settled in her life. She's getting a little bit older and she's not quite sure 
if being an Instagram influencer and a socialite should be her entire identity, but she doesn't really know what else to do. So she decides to kind of hit it with some gusto, break into a hotel, throw an insane party that gets everybody arrested, and that is the last straw for her stepfather, who says, you know what, I'm cutting you off. We can't do this anymore. Cutting you off so she no longer has access to any of her trust, any of his money, any of anything. And in order for her to kind of earn it back, she has to go and prove herself. So her biological father was a fisherman who died when she was a baby and left her a bar in his will. And so she needs to go spend like three months or something off in Washington, kind of living a regular life for a while. So she and her sister Hannah decide to go up. Hannah just didn't want to leave her to the depths of um, Washington herself, so she goes with her. And they meet Brendan. Why did I space on his name there for a minute? They meet Brendan, who is a fishing ship captain. He crab fishes most specifically. And this is another grumpy sunshine romance. He is the epitome of grumpy and grouchy. But what Tessa Bailey does so well is she really does a good job of giving flesh to her characters, but also getting both perspectives in kind of an even mix so that you're rooting for both of the characters. And I think that was what I was really, really lacking from my previous book. Uh, but they are just so cute and so sweet together. And they have, of course, conflict, but it isn't like incredibly unnecessary conflict. It's conflict that feels very natural to the situation that they're in. And I really loved it. Tessa Bailey also writes some really steamy, steamy sections. So I did enjoy this book very much and highly recommend it. Um, which made me decide to go back and reread what is arguably my favorite Tessa Bailey novel and that is Unfortunately Yours. This is the first book that I read by Tessa Bailey and I fell absolutely in love with it. This is a five star read for me. I have gone back and reread it two or three times at this point because I just love the characters so much. So in this book, this is technically the second in um, kind of a dual world, I guess. Um, so the first book, or I guess, so it's not a series or a duo or anything like that. It's just like, it includes some of the same characters in the book previous. So her brother is focused on in the first one. I'm getting rambly, so let's kind of take it back a notch. So we have Natalie Voss. Natalie Voss is the youngest child of a wine making family who lives in Napa Valley. And so she is someone who the family didn't really, I don't want to say care for, but she always felt like she was in the shadow of her brother. And so that caused her to really act out when she was a kid looking for attention, but in a way that did not give her positive attention. So she's a little bit of the black sheep. I guess that's the proper way of explaining it. She's a bit of the black sheep of the family. Um, after high school, she goes off to college. She starts working in finance. She's living in New York and she is absolutely dominating the finance and Wall Street scene until she makes a really bad trade and gets fired. And her stupid fiance, who also works for the same firm, decides to save face and breaks up with her as well. So she goes back to Napa, kind of licking her wounds, trying to figure out what she's going to do to kind of get back into this world that she has been unceremoniously booted from. But she needs money for that. And her trust fund is only accessible to her if she gets married. Very, very common trope. All kinds of things happen. And you can't have your money unless you get married, which is so silly in this day and age. But you know what? It's okay because this book is so charming. So she meets August Kate. August is uh, a former military man who is trying to open and establish a winery in memory of his friend who died in combat. And he's not doing a good job at it. So... He's about to, you know, close up shop and be like, this is the last time I'm going to try anything. I'm out of money. I just, there's no way I can move forward. He and Natalie have a fiery, uh, non-friendly relationship up until this point. They just, they trade barbs back and forth. 
Um, but she realizes, you know what, I need to get married and quick and he's out of money, he's gonna need to take out a loan in order to keep his winery afloat. He's already been denied for this loan, but if he is married to a Voss, who is like Napa royalty, they'll be able to give him a loan, no problem. And it will, you know, satisfy the stipulations of my trust fund. It's a win-win. We'll stay married for a month and then we'll go our separate ways and everybody wins. And of course, that's not what happens. It is just so, their chemistry is fantastic. Their interplay is fantastic. Their foreplay is fantastic. Like all of it is just so good. If you take away one from this list of books that I've read, this is the one. Love this book so, so much. The next book that I read, I believe was, yeah, Pretend You're Mine. This is Pretend You're Mine from Lucy Score. Um, this one I did give four stars, but it was like a hesitant, like I want a half star. I, I am not being all that complicated in my um, rating system. <laughs> that probably means nothing to anybody. Um, but this, this was okay. This was, this was a good book um, in relationship to all the other books that I read. So you have Luke, who is um, a military man so he's just in the reserves at this point and no not the reserves he's in the National Guard so he's kind of doing some tours coming back home for a while going out for another tour coming back for a while it's not like the military military where you're just in it all the time that is a wild wild oversimplification so please don't come for me in the comments I'm just giving it to you the way that it is important for this book <laughs> Um, so he is going, he's going to be leaving for another six month tour in Iraq, I think. Hold on. Let's double check this. Don't think it says on the back, but it doesn't matter. He is about to be going off on another tour, but his family is on his case about having been single for as long as he's been single and in walks Harper. Harper Wilde comes to town quite by accident and sees a man trying to um, lay hands on a woman in a parking lot and she flies off the handle, jumps in and like attacks this guy. Which doesn't go so well for her. She ends up getting knocked out. And that's not the worst thing because you know, the guy ends up getting arrested, blah, blah, blah. Well, Luke is there because he is there because it's the only bar in this really small town and kind of comes to the rescue. And like it's cute his sister is is a bartender at this bar and without even knowing each other all of a sudden like sister is like hey you need somewhere to stay stay at my brother luke's house and luke is like that's weird but okay and harper's like i don't know any of y'all i'm down for this like all of it <laughs> all of it's really really kind of sudden but with books like this you're supposed to be suspending you know belief here you're supposed to be just kind of going with it but they end up having really great chemistry and they decide to fake date another very popular trope in books like this decide to fake date for the month or so before he leaves on his um, next tour and then they'll fake break up and go their separate ways and it's just like mutually beneficial for everybody she needs a job because she's just gotten out of a relationship where he has not been faithful so she's kind of couch, planning on couch surfing anyway so it all kinds of works out he owns a contracting firm there in the town that they live in and she comes in to be like head receptionist kind of situation office manager and of course sparks fly and you find out a lot of their backstories um there was like a weird like side backstory that makes a really like flash in flash out sort of appearance that it felt very very unnecessary and like conflict for conflict's sake uh, but beyond that it was a fun read it was a steamy read and I really did enjoy it um, I'm still gonna go with Tessa Bailey as the winner in this rundown but this was a fun book it was a fun book especially if you like um the, again, it's a very grumpy to sunshine sort of pairing, which apparently seems to be something that I gravitate towards because 
We also have the King of Wrath, which is definitely a grumpy and sunshine pairing. So this is the King of Wrath by Anna Huang. I hope I said that correctly. Um, and this one, you have to really suspend disbelief here because we have very high society. We're talking with billionaires here. Um, and you have Dante. Dante is a billionaire of the Resso um, conglomerate that has a bunch of luxury good sort of um, brands and stores and things like that underneath him. He's this like ruthless CEO that, you know, if you wrong him, he will like physically take it out on you. Um, so he's super scary. But he all of a sudden is kind of, not kind of, but definitely blackmailed into marrying Vivian. So this is where you have to suspend some disbelief because you got Vivian Lau, I'm sorry, Vivian Lau, who is the daughter of a jewelry mogul, but they're new money. And so apparently coming up on 30, her parents are like, you know what, you're not married yet. So we're going to do an arranged marriage for you. And she's like, yeah, I'm resigned to that. I kind of always knew that was coming, which again, just okay. Um, but so her dad is the one that's blackmailing Dante into marrying her because he is obsessed with this idea of not being socially good enough because he's new money and Dante's old money and in order to get in with the old money high society you have to marry into it so he's going to blackmail his way in and as you can imagine that is not well received by Dante. Vivian has no idea the backstory behind this arranged marriage. She just knows that this man that she just met and is now moving into his house is going to be her husband in a year. Um, kind of strange in that regard, but the chemistry here is nice. They do have some good interplay. They have good conversation. You learn a lot more about Dante. You learn a lot more about Vivian. And of course, nothing is what it seems on the surface. And it's a really, it's a, it's a fun book. I did enjoy this one. I, the next two books that I'm going to talk about are the next two books in this series. I think of the three that I've read, this one is my favorite thus far. I liked their connection. I liked their, um, they had some really spicy scenes, some really spicy scenes that were nice. Um, but yeah, of course things go the way they go. The next story or the next two in this sort of series I read on my Kindle. So I'm just going to pop up uh, a little picture of the cover, but you have King of Pride. And so all of these books are sort of interconnected with um, the same, not people, but friend group, I guess. Everyone's kind of tangentially connected. And so in this book, you have Isabella, who is a friend of Vivian's, who is trying to be a writer in New York, which is where all of these take place. She's wanting to be a writer, but she's just quirky and flighty and very just spunky. She ends up getting a job at Valhalla Club, which is the ultra exclusive members only club that plays prominently in all of these books. Um, she gets a job bartending there and there she's kind of meeting the upper of the upper echelon of society. And one of those is Dante's good friend, Kai. And of course, sparks are flying. They end up kind of secretly hooking up because it is expressly forbidden that um, an employee starts being friendly with a member. So they're kind of hooking it up on the side. He is trying to win the CEO of the Young Group, uh, his name is Kai Young. They are, I believe, if my memory serves properly, like a multimedia kind of company. And so his mother is the current CEO and rather than just rampant nepotism of when she retires handing it over to Kai, they do an actual CEO vote, even though it's assumed that he's gonna win the vote. It's apparently just for a show. But he's still really stressed out about it because he works really hard for the company and he doesn't like the idea of it being so nepotismal. No, that's not a word. He doesn't like the nepotism of it all. You know, he wants to actually earn his role. So he's really stressed out about that. She's also got this like family stuff going on because she's approaching 30 
and she doesn't have a career and her parents her family rather you know is uh not thrilled about that she wants to be a writer but she hasn't been able to really finish anything and she's got a lot of imposter syndrome there and so they really kind of work through it with each other while working through each other uh and it was a, it was a sweet read it was a fun read um i did i did enjoy that one i will give that one four stars as well if i didn't mention the first book in the series i gave four stars to as well and their relationship is just definitely very sweet and wholesome and they really kind of bring out the best in each other which i always love to see and then we get on to the third book that I have read in this series, which is The King of Greed. And that is the last book that has been published so far. I didn't realize when I started this that it was not a finished series of books. I should have looked into that, but I didn't. Um, so The King of Greed, that follows Dominic and Alessandra. They are a married couple in this book. And Dominic is like the king of Wall Street. He came from a nothing sort of background. He was a foster kid and he fought tooth and nail and now he's a billionaire at the top of the Wall Street pyramid and he has devoted his entirety of his being into building this career and left Alessandra basically in um, an empty house. So they've been married for 10 years at the start of this book. They are about to celebrate their 10th anniversary and he bails on the trip. So she bails on the marriage. I guess that's an oversimplification, but she's like, you know what? I'm done. You are not the man that I married anymore. You know, the man that I married, you know, um, was attentive and sweet and kind and remembered that I existed. That is not who you are anymore. And I have completely lost myself in this relationship and in trying to help you move to where you're here now. And I need to figure out myself, which honestly, more power to her. I know I said it very flippantly about bailing, but more power to her. Too many of us end up feeling very lost in our lives at some point in time. And relationships are things that can do that. When you put more of yourself into your partner than you put into yourself, it can lead to those feelings. So honestly, I give her a lot of props for that. I didn't enjoy the story a ton. Um, that one I gave three stars. It just, it felt like a filler book. You know, when you're in a series and you've got some books that are bangers and some books that you're like, okay, why are we doing this? Um, and that's how I felt here. It was really frustrating because Dom, um, he realizes after she leaves, he's like, what have I done? You know, she's the love of my life. I can't believe that I let the most important thing in the world get away. Sentiments we all really want and appreciate. And like then and there, he starts doing everything that he should have been doing throughout the course of the marriage. And it's just, it's really frustrating from an outside perspective of being like, dude, you easily did all the things that you should have been doing. So why weren't you doing them? So I, I don't know it was just it was not my favorite and if I were to recommend if you're a completionist like me obviously read it but you could skip it I don't think you're missing out on anything so those are the seven books yeah the seven books that I have read in January and some very quick thoughts and opinions on them um, again if I was to recommend one book here that I have read in January it is of course going to be Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey. I really really loved this book so much and I want to read more works from her. I think I've read five books that she's written um, and you know she writes some she writes some really nice steamy stuff. So if you enjoy steamy stuff I recommend her as well. Let me know what have you been reading recently and do you enjoy these leading, little reading wrap ups or reading reviews or whatever I end up calling this series. I would like to do them throughout the course of this year just because I think they're fun. Even though I know that they're a deviation from my regular content, I personally think they're fun and it helps maintain um, the reading clip that I'm at, which I really like. I wanna finish 24 books this year in 2024. If I maintain the pace that I'm at now, that should be no problem, but I don't know if that is what's going to end up happening. So again, let me know what have you been reading? What do you recommend? What do you not recommend? And who is your favorite author? I'm always looking for new inspiration. 
If you've enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope that you'll consider doing so. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you're having an amazing day. And I will see you next time. Bye.